Okay, I am back. Uh, today is finally the day we're gonna install all the lights on the house. If you watched my last video, you'll see all the parts that we used and kind of what the idea is behind what's going on. But let's go ahead and get right into installing the lights on the house and get this thing going. Also, stay tuned to the end of this video and we'll do a breakdown of how much I spent uh, on everything involved and we'll give you the total cost. So stay tuned for that at the end. All right, so we're up here up on the roof. We're putting the channels in. Uh, so basically, I just want to kind of show you how it works. We got our channel right there. We got our brackets here. You know, our drill here. Now it makes it much easier and you don't have to do this, but if you put a pilot hole in there, it makes this much easier because a lot of it I'm having to reach for with one hand and uh, it's hard to steady the screw into the hole. So uh, pilot hole makes it much, much easier. So basically what we're gonna do, is gonna go about right here. Pilot hole. Okay, so now, now that we got the pilot hole, we've changed our bit and got a screw on there. And we're just gonna go drill it in. Really tough with one hand and when a wasp lands on your hand, we're just gonna go in like that and line it up. And for the, this one's two meters or six and a half feet or something like that. So this one gets four of these brackets. And I got the top one and I got the bottom one and now I'll do two in between. So that's how it is. And then I'll show you when we're done how to clip it in. Okay, so I got all of my brackets in. So basically you're just gonna stick the edge in there. You just kind of roll it in and it just clips in. And it's kind of hard for you to see this and I'm up on the roof, so try to do this safely. There, and then the final one, which I have to cut the edge to match the peak. And there you have it. So now I just gotta have to measure how long we need the LED strips to be, uh, put them together and then uh, lay them in and then uh, wire them up. All right, now that I got the brackets all put up, now I got the lights in. So to keep myself from soldering up on a ladder, I'm gonna cut right here, and I'm gonna use one of these uh, brackets, the, one of these connectors right here, so I don't have to get up on the ladder with a soldering iron. So basically I'm just gonna cut right here, peel some of the coating back, and then connect these, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so, this is kind of what it looks like. Let's see. And we just close. You have to cut some of the uh, 
the coating off of it. And then you just have one pin on each pad that transfers the data. And you just close this up and then you'll just do the other string on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting up the, the lights and uh, get this party started. All right, so to change of plans, um, my connectors here actually don't even fit into the channels. So that's kind of a bummer. So now what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to solder um, some connecting wires like this and then to the other um, string. So unfortunately that's the hard way, but that's what I'm going to do. So I'll show you what it looks like when it gets done. Okay, so here it is all soldered up. So I've got some shrink wrap here. I'm gonna cover this with some hot glue and then cover it with the shrink wrap and that way it's nice and watertight. I'm gonna go ahead and pre-tin this tip over here. So the only soldering I have to do up on the roof is actually to the pad itself. Uh, I could probably go ahead and do it now, but then I'd have to carry up two spools onto the ladder and I don't know if I feel comfortable doing that. So that's what it's gonna have to be. Okay, so that's kind of what it looks like uh, with the hot glue and the heat shrink on there. You can kind of see some of the glue coming out there and it means it's all protected from the elements. And then I got the other end pre-tinned and ready to go. So when I get up there with the other half, or uh, the other string, um, then it'll be ready to just solder the tips right on. So hopefully it won't be too bad. Uh, there won't be a whole lot to do when I get up there, hopefully. So we're gonna give it a shot like this and see what happens, YOLO. Okay, so I'm up here on the ladder. Um, these ends right here come with holes. Well, half of them come with holes in them already. However, the holes are not big enough for your wire to go through. So just made them a little bigger with a drill bit. And uh, I just started laying in the LEDs. It's got this adhesive strip right here. So just as I pull, I just pull the uh, adhesive strip off and just lay, lay it in there just like that. Easier with two hands for sure. Just pull a little backing off, press it down, and then we'll just go all the way down. Okay, so um, one thing that I've learned here is when you're putting these diffusers on, uh, try to alternate them to where uh, this is one channel and then here's another channel. So they kind of join the channels together. It makes it so much more sturdy and even uh, if you can do that. And what I'm doing is I'm taking some hot glue or some silicone to kind of cover up these gaps right there. So uh, also got my power injection wire. It won't fit in the channel like I wanted it to. Um, so I'm tucking it under the ease right here and then I'm running and get all the way down uh, to the end. So that's where we're at right now. All right, y'all, so this is the final piece of the puzzle. Um, I've already got 
above the garage and above the front door. So we've got the back section up here. Uh, we've got a really long slope and we've got two branches that are shorter coming off of that. So this one's gonna be like 408-ish LEDs and in each one of these are the same length, so it's about 116. Um, yeah, so there's quite a long strand and I wanted them to be all, all one, so I had to do quite a bit of soldering here. So this is, this one right here is coming off the middle of the long one. So this one is here. This big one right here is this long section. And then this one's, this one's so long, I had to put some of it on this one as well. And then you can see right here where I uh, soldered right this transition right here. And so the inner part of this one is here. So because those fittings didn't fit in the channel, I've had to done have had to do a massive amount of soldering. So if you don't know how to solder and you want to do this, then you got to find some bigger channels, I guess, because there's been absolutely a massive amount of soldering. So what I have here, um, that's a spare piece. So like I said, I got my power injection already tinned up for my butt connectors. Uh, I'm actually gonna use this connector here. I'm just gonna solder my, uh, the other side of this connector straight to the, uh, the power wire there. And then this one also is gonna have power injection. Uh, so we're gonna have power coming in three different places because this one's so long, it needs extra power. So we're gonna have the main power coming in here and data running this direction. It's gonna split here. There's gonna be power injection here and power injection here. So hopefully that'll be enough power uh, to light it up evenly because on this section right here, I have power coming in and I have power injection here. And I can tell a little bit right here, there's a slight amount of discoloring, even though the whole thing is only 26 feet, I think. Um, right around the peak, which is be the middle, and probably could benefit from some power injection, but I've already got it sealed up, so we're just gonna have to live with it. It's not bad, and probably no one else will notice, but I notice it. This one is about 23 feet, I think, and I have power coming in here, and then power injection here, and this one's fine. I can't tell uh, any power loss here. And this one, like I said, is just very minimal and probably no one else will notice, but I've noticed it. So if I were to do it over with, I probably would power inject here and here with the power coming in right here, but it's too late for that now. And I'm just gonna leave it cause it's really not that bad. And, and so uh, last step is to get this one uh, strung up and the wires run down into the garage and then we'll be all done. All right, quick little test and just to make sure all my soldering was good. Uh, I checked continuity throughout the whole thing and it was good. So I assumed it was going to be, but I'd rather go ahead and double check it now before it's all up on the, on the side of the house and find out that it's no good. So uh, confirmation that it's good. So now we're clear to hang it up on the house. Okay. So this is the finished product uh, here. Uh, I've already showed you the inside of the box, but I'll show it to you again with everything hooked up. So I got everything labeled and connected there. So we're all good. Um, this is a waterproof box, but with all the lights on and especially on white, I can hear this thing running a lot. And I'm not sure if it's gonna overheat in there or not, but I do have a cover I can cut in here, but I mean, obviously it won't be waterproof anymore, but I don't really think it needs it. Uh, I don't know, we'll see what happens. But I do have that if I feel like it needs it. And so we have the hur a hurricane coming soon. So I just kind of tidied up the wires as best I could. 
So I have them come down there and there and into our hole there. Uh, that may be a temporary thing so I can find something better. But for now, I just wanted to get it wrapped up for this video. And this is what the lights all installed. You can, from this distance, you can hardly even tell that they're there. So I think they look great. During the day, they look awesome. So let me show you what it looks like at night. Okay, so before we get into the lights at night, uh, let's just break down some of these numbers real quick. Um, keep in mind that it's 2022 right now and everything is super expensive. So uh, the main things, uh, the lights, about six strands of five meters, uh, IP65, uh, 60 LEDs per meter. Uh, those are six strands, they're $34 each, so that's $204. The channels, I got about 90 feet uh, of channels. That was about $170. The junction box, this is one of the things that you could probably save on if you're gonna copy everything that I do. Uh, I spent $63 on the junction box. It's about 15.4 inches by 11.4 inches by 6.3 inches, and you've seen how big it is. I definitely could have gotten one that was smaller and maybe one that's not waterproof, or um, I'd probably say if you spent somewhere in the $35 range, you could probably make something happen there. Uh, so you could probably save about 30 bucks there. Um, the Dig Quad um, is about $45 but uh, the US store was sold out, so I had to go to the international store, which is in China, and order it from there. So it was extra, ch extra shipping. So I spent about $64 on the Dig Quad controller. Uh, the power supply was about $28. Got 100 feet of two conductor, 18 gauge wire, $28. 100 feet of three conductor, 18 gauge wire, $38. Um, those, you could probably, I've seen people use 22 gauge wire, which is less expensive, uh, but I felt more comfortable with the third, with the 18 gauge. And so I had 200 feet of wire and I used all of it. Uh, I think I've measured out total of 90 feet worth of LEDs, but how far away they were from my controller, I ended up using all 200 feet of wire. Um, the remote outlet we talked about in the last uh, video, 20 bucks. Uh, let's see, uh, the connectors uh, that I ended up not using, um, they were $8. Uh, the butt connectors with the solder inside of them, $9. I have a ton of them left over. I got an assortment. Um, Cable management, like the um, conduit and all the stuff to make it look nice, uh, and, the, uh, and the stuff to hide the wires on the outside of the house, about 50 bucks for all that stuff. Um, some things that I already had that I didn't have to spend money on was heat shrink, uh, hot glue, and solder, um, and a couple other miscellaneous things I just had already. Uh, that would easily add up to another 20 bucks if you were to buy that stuff, maybe more. Uh, but I didn't include that, and I also didn't include installing the outlet because you, if you do this, you might not have to install an extra outlet. So I didn't include that. Um, let's see, I think that's everything. Uh, so the total there is $682. Uh, so there's definitely some room to save. And the LEDs, they were 34 a strand, and they used to be like 20 before everything started exploding in price. And I'm sure the channels were probably cheaper too. So if I had I done this project two years ago, maybe would have not cost nearly this much. 
but I'm happy with the project and you'll see in just a second what it looks like. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is if you watched my last video, I mentioned I was gonna rent a boom to get the, the high peak above the garage. It's about 30 feet. Um, obviously after watching this, you know that I didn't do that. I uh, got impatient and I just borrowed a ladder and it just started working and it ended up not being so bad, but uh, renting a boom for something that high is probably the best and safest way to do it. But uh, I ended up being able to save 250 bucks by not renting the boom and just using the ladder. Uh, the ladder was a little sketchy, but I had someone holding it and setting it for me and uh, it worked. So uh, if you're comfortable on a high ladder, then that's the cheapest way to do it. So I have four, uh, excuse me, three channels of, uh, that I'm using on the dig quad. So I have an extra channel left over that I'm not using. Uh, the first channel is above the garage. It's uh, 437 LEDs. Uh, channel two is over the front porch, 412 LEDs on that one. And uh, channel three is the upper section, upper back section of the house, which was the longest, 640 LEDs. So total was 1,489 LEDs that were actually used out of the six strands. Um, so that's everything. Um, if I were to do this over with, I probably would add some more power injection in a couple more spots. But overall, I'm happy with the way things turned out. Uh, it, this project can easily get uh, out of control with the price if you just wanna keep going out. And uh, I have extra plans to do more stuff for the Christmas time, uh, some props and uh, maybe some candy canes and some arches and stuff like that. So stay tuned for all that stuff later on in the year. Hopefully, uh, if, uh, if everything works out okay, that's gonna be a project coming up. Uh, so enjoy these lights, and I hope you enjoyed the whole project. And let me know in the comments what you think and what you would do differently. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.